Let's take a look at the details of the modern digital design flow. Um, and let's just start with the actual digital design flow and look at how we've, we've described this using the classical approach. And then let's look at how we can use that with, uh, with the modern flow. So here's kind of the, the steps involved in any digital design. So the first thing you do is you don't just throw circuitry down. You, you come up with specifications. What are you trying to do? So what is the behavior of it? And the behavior of it can also include things such as power consumption and size and area, uh, things that we haven't looked at. We're designing kind of at the logic level, but this is going to be what is it going to do and how much power does it consume, et cetera, et cetera. Then you move from the specifications, and these are just words. These are something that would form, come out in a document, like a control document or a theory of operation. Then you go down to the functional design, and this is the high-level architecture. So this is where you start doing block diagrams and you describe the behavior. So this is where you would have like truth tables and algorithmic diagrams and state diagrams, register transfer level diagrams of how is the system, what is it really supposed to do? What is the, what is the specification of its behavior? And then you go into the synthesis. And synthesis is where you take that functional description and you create the logic for it. Now remember, this is digital design. This is where you're going to implement, everything's going to be a gate at some point or some storage, digital storage device. But you take the functional description and you synthesize it into the gate level. And then you do this step called technology mapping. And what you do here is, when you have an AND gate, what is the technology you use to implement that AND gate? Are you going to implement the AND gate with a 7400 series part? Is that 7400 series part going to be TTL? Is it going to be CMOS? Or are you going to implement this with a 22 nanometer uh, cutting edge CMOS process from some vendor? So w the AND gate can be implemented with almost an unlimited, well not unlimited, but a large number of technologies. So what technology do you choose? Then, once you have those, <coughs> what's neat at this step is that once you have the technology, you can actually start getting an idea of the delay through the circuitry. So whatever transistor technology you choose for your AND gate, it's going to have a certain delay. So you can kind of get a, a first stab at how long the gate delay is going to be. But then what you do is you start placing and routing. So this is where you move the parts around, you get them in a position so that the routing is minimized, and then you, you route the wires together. At that point, you can actually get information about the delay of the timing or the timing of the routing and the actual gates themselves. And then you can do this step called verification. And verification is where you check to make sure that the functionality is, is correct. And you also verify that you've met other specifications such as the power consumption and the timing. Now, timing tends to be the first one we look at is if we said we wanted the circuit to run in less than, or at 100 megahertz, or we wanted the delay to be less than one nanosecond, did we actually achieve that? And once you've verified it, you do the fabrication. This is where you button it up, put it in its final form, and then you can ship it. Let's, here's an example of, of the flow using discrete parts. <laughs> so let's just, specifications, we're going to build a a prime number detector. And this is a classical digital design. So we're going to implement it with discrete parts and we're going to do all the design by hand. <coughs> so we're going to have a prime number detector. It's going to take in decimal numbers from 0 to 7. And it needs to be able to have a delay of less than 200 nanoseconds. So it computes that in less than 200. So the functional design is going to look like this. We're going to have a system that has three inputs. And these are binary inputs. And that'll represent 0 to 7 in decimal using the code 000 up to 111. And it'll have an output called PN. And it'll assert every time there's a prime number. So this, the functionality of that is going to be the truth table, since this is a combinational logic circuit. And you can see that we'll put ones wherever it's a prime number and zeros wherever it is not. So that's the description of the behavior. Now we synthesize it. Now we're going to do it with a classical approach. So let's go ahead and use a K-map to, tr to create a minimized uh, sum of products logic expression. Once we do that, we can come over and create the logic diagram. So this is now the gate level description of the behavior. If we use these gates, we will get this behavior. We don't know how fast it will run because we don't know the delay of these gates yet. But you, then you come and you map these gates into a technology. Or said another way, you go and you say for this AND gate, this OR gate, and this inverter, I'm going to go choose a part. 
So let's just choose something very simple, a 74HC CMOS logic family using discrete parts. And what we do is then we say, okay, I'm going to implement, uh, let's say I chose to implement everything with NAND gates. So I used the Morgans and I converted all these to NAND gates and I just grabbed these parts and I have delay now of all these things. And so now each AND gate is, is a physical device. So it is corresponding to something that really exists in the world. Then we place and route it. So this is where we position the chip wherever we're going to have it in our system and we wire it up. In this situation we could do it with one chip and we do all this wiring on here. And these are where the inputs come in, this is where the outputs come in. And finally we have verification. So what we can do is we can make sure that we put in all the input codes and we make sure that it actually produces the right information and we can estimate the delay through it. So we go to the data sheets and we look at the wiring delay. We measure wiring delay or estimate the wiring delay and we come up with the total delay and say, okay, it met specifications, so now we're ready to fab. So then the fab would be we put the final circuit together in some product and we ship it. Now at this point, the verification step, if it hadn't met uh, the specifications, you might have been able to have the same, the right logic right here. So this circuit may have created this true table. But what if it was like 500 nanoseconds? What you would have had to do is say, well, I have to go back to some level in this flow and change it. So you probably wouldn't change the synthesis because this is uh, the circuit works, but you would change your technology mapping. So the technology mapping is where you'd say, instead of choosing a particular NAND gate with a certain delay, I would choose a faster NAND gate. Then I would replace and route depending on the package, and I would do this analysis again. So there's an iterative uh, loop in here if you don't meet your specifications. Okay, so that's the classical digital design flow mapped into that traditional just design flow. So now you say, well, what, do, what does the modern digital design flow look like? The modern digital design flow is where you rely on HDLs, hardware description languages, to describe the behavior, and then you're going to use automated tools to do steps in between. The magic of this is that at every step, you can simulate and make sure that everything is working the way you want. The reason this is so powerful is that a hardware description language allows you to model the functionality at different levels of abstraction, so you can make sure that the higher level kind of description of what you want actually simulates and simulates properly before you move to the next step. So for example, let's say you have specifications for that same prime number detector. You do a functional design, so you make the block and you say, okay, I'm going to have three inputs and one output, and you describe the functionality and behavior of this at some very high level of abstraction within the hardware description language, and you simulate it. And you say, okay, that worked. Now, who knows if, if that'll synthesize, but what we can then do is we can hit the synthesis button once we get the simulation right, and we can then say, this synthesis is going to give us the gate level schematic of that functionality. Now, this step right here is very powerful because when you go from the functional design to synthesis, the synthesis can be simulated, simulated. So you can imagine that you could describe something, you know, you enter a truth table in a hardware description language and make sure that it works right. Then you hit the synthesis button and down here you're going to get a sum of products gate net list. So at this level you simulate that gate net list to make sure that these things match each other before you move on. Once you do that, you can then technology map, and the technology map now is an automated, automated step. So you pull information about the actual gates that you're going to be using uh, from the vendor, and you can include that in your simulation. And then at this point, you can make sure that not only is it still working, but it's actually meeting the timing requirements. And then you can put in here, you can place and route automatically, since now we're, we're usually talking about you know, systems that are implemented on large fabrics, so large integrated circuits or large programmable devices, so we can place the, hun the, thou the many, many gates and we can route them. And when you have many, many gates, the routing delay becomes non-negligible. So once you do that, you can simulate again to make sure that it still meets your specifications. And once you're finally done, you get down to here to this final verification step, and this is where you check all the way back to, did it meet the original specifications? Does it perform the way that you wanted? And does it meet things such as timing? And does it meet things such as the power consumption? And does it, does it fit in the area that you wanted? Once you do, then you go to the fabrication step. The fabrication step is typically something where you 
create the files that would be used to fabricate an integrated circuit, and that integrated circuit would pop out, and that's your product. Or you could create the files that would be downloaded onto a programmable logic device, and then that programmable logic device is the final product. So this is the modern digital design flow that uses the, the CAD tools to allow you to do simulations at all these different levels of abstractions as you work down toward the final fabrication step.